Welcome back. It is day three, the final day of our red group. This is the Call of Duty World League Global Pro League, and we are in stage two. $700,000 up for grabs, and we have our first set of four teams competing for the first two spots in the playoffs. We got TP down at the end, and TP, I just said a lot of words, but break it down as simple as possible. How does the Global Pro League work? So if you missed stage one, these 16 teams made it here for stage two through different qualification processes. Basically, you're trying to get top two in your group, double round robin format, four teams per group, obviously. If you get top two, you make it to that $500,000 playoff, where obviously that's a lot of money and a lot of momentum going into champs. So you can see the groups here, red, blue, yellow, green. You gotta get top two. Tiebreaker's gonna be that map count right there. You can see uh, Luminosity killing it 12 and four. 12 and four for Luminosity. We'll dive deeper into our red group in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the money that will be up for grabs in the playoffs. If you lock in top two, this is what you're playing for, Momo. Yeah, $500,000, half a million split between the teams. Of course, you want that larger chunk of change. First and second split in 200, 120,000. But all the way down to eighth position, we'll be taking home some money. But $200,000, of course, for you know the actual stage itself. 500,000 for playoffs, a lot of money on all these teams as well, looking ahead to COD champs. It just gets bigger and better. And of course, we got Joey D, Mr. Joe DeLuca. Fill us in of what's happened so far in our red group. This is the first of four, and already we have two days of matches in the books. Yeah, I mean, Luminosity, our, our Anaheim champions, just dominating. I mean, they just look so good right now. A lot of people are calling them the best team in the world. It's hard to disagree with that. Fnatic, they're two and two. You know, they, they did upset Evil Geniuses, EG one and three right now, but they do face Fnatic and Mind Freak today. And Mind Freak, they have a very tough day ahead of them. Sitting at one and three, they will have to face both North American teams. It's gonna be a tough one for them. And let's take a look at the overall schedule here, guys. I want you to kind of break it down for me. We all know this is a hunt for second place, but who has the toughest road? When you look at Fnatic, Mind Freak, and EG's day, who is gonna have the toughest time? Uh, it's definitely Fnatic for sure. Gotta take this first matchup versus Luminosity, and that can go bad very quickly. You wanna try and build momentum early in this day, and it most likely will go to that 6.30 match, that match number four, Fnatic versus EG to get that second place. But EG has to get that win over Mind Freak to make that possible. Momo, we saw Mind Freak was at the very bottom of our groups right now, the leaderboard. How do they climb back up? Is there any way that they steal the second spot? I, I mean, they, they've got to go all out. You know, they've got EG and LG back to back. Um, they, you know, if they beat both teams, absolutely. You know, they can do this and they'd have to kind of go back and forth. But uh, again, depending on the results of Fnatic, EG, how that one goes as well. I think you're looking at EG maybe to, to kind of that favorable day. It's the one day they don't have to play Luminosity. Um, so for them, a lot of people will be looking at them to take that second spot. Argument, you know, you could put forward for Fnatic is, you know, they're already kind of in the driving seat there okay the top, but it for me goes down to this last game it makes it even more important i think it's going to go to fanatic or eg winner takes all we know fanatic has a one match edge right now joe who do you feel is coming out in that second spot at the end of day three it's gonna be tough if everything happens the way we we think it does it will come down to that last match you know i, I don't think fanatic's gonna beat luminosity in this first one they could spoil the entire day and, and beat them right away uh, but EG, you have to think they're going to beat Mind Freak, and then it would just come down to, to, to uh, uh, EG and Fnatic, that last match of the day. It, it would be tough. If, if EG handles their business, I, I have a feeling they're going to get through that, through that second place. It's all going to be who is going to be the first team to reach three match wins at the end of our double round robin. Before we get into our first matchup, though, of Fnatic versus Luminosity, let's take a look back at day number two. Now, this is a new segment we're going to be doing throughout the Global Pro League, and this is where our analysts pick one player that impressed and one player that needs to step it up. TP, I want to start with you at the end there. Which player went off in day two? Uh, it's going to be from Luminosity. It's really hard to pick out of these guys, all four such solid players, but for me, it's going to be classic. That overall KD, 1.17. And the reason I'm picking this guy is I feel like he plays one of the hardest roles on the team. He's going to be that main e a lot of the time. You expect that to be from Slack, but for whatever reason in this game, he's playing that role. There's so many times in Uplink where he is going to be that first one in. And I'm going back to the Frost Uplink I saw from him yesterday. Picking up four pieces is really a seven streak and single-handedly putting the team on his back for them to get multiple dunks in a row. The guy's been unbelievable. We talk about him being underrated. I 
think that's going away. He's a top player for sure. Classic's been around at the top for a long time now. Momo, tell me though, on day two, who was your guy? It was hard to not pick someone uh, from LG, but I did look towards EG. For me, it was Havoc. Uh, he had a phenomenal day yesterday in particular, but all weekend long, really, he's been fantastic. His S&D has been great, but for me, he was always kind of underperforming in response. Not this weekend. This weekend, he has stepped it up. We saw him on retail. Hard point, he was dropping 22 and 11 or something like that. Uh, but overall, really well-rounded player. And for me as well, with uh, with Study leaving EG, he almost becomes that hype man. He's the one on stage that almost ripping his shirt open. Now, I want him to continue that. And I think if he does, alongside Nameless, they can take that second place. If you missed it last night, Havoc helped EG take Luminosity the distance in the final series of the day. Keep your eyes on him as our day progresses with the EG matches. Joe, your guy, who was it from day two? Yeah, it's hard to pick someone not from Luminosity, but I, I had to go with Saints. I mean, he's been an absolute beast these past few times. Look at that S&D kitty. He has a 2.0 that's absolutely ridiculous, and I just feel like it's his impact. The one respawn they did lose, he didn't have that great of a game. It was that throwback uplink versus Evil Geniuses. When he's going off, when he's playing consistent with Octane, with Slack, they're just so hard to stop. He puts so much pressure on the map. And we should note, those numbers you see right there are from only day two. Those are the numbers they were dropping in our second day here of Group Red. Let's talk about the players, though, that didn't live up to the hype, that underperformed and may have cost their team a series. TP, starting with you once again. I feel like we've given this guy a lot of flack throughout the past couple events especially, but I have to go with Buzzo again. And for me, the KD obviously isn't there. We got to pick on him for that. But the most outstanding thing for me is that Slayer number. That number is way too low for Infinite Warfare if you're going to have consistent success, and it hasn't really gone up over these past few events. You need speed. You need uh, just overall uh, decisive gameplay. There's several times at hard points where I see him just pre-aiming, his teammates spawning up behind him, passing him up. It's just not the style of play that works. I've struggled with the, that fast style of play at times. It just gets to you at times, and it's, just, it's not working out well. We saw Parasite showing off what you can do when you start hip-firing before you <laughs> aim down those. <laughs> Momo, who is your guy that needs to go big on day three after a rough day two? I've looked towards Fnatic, and I think the one player that does need to kind of step it up is Sunny B. And again, it's very hard to look past KD, but I do want to drive home. KD is not everything. Much like T said about Classic, I feel Sunny has that hard job on this team. Again, the role I used to play, you know, that one who had to kind of put themselves out there a bit. But I think if Sunny turns it up, he, he is the one to kind of just go off. He can drive home a victory, and he can take that second place. Sunny turns up, Fnatic could play second. Fnatic is going to need Sunny B to go big against Luminosity. That's our first match of the day, and it's just moments away. Before we get to it, Joe, who was your guy day two that let you down? Yeah, this might surprise some people. It was a guy from Mind Freak. He was Shocks. And, and to be honest, that just overall KD, that SD KD, he was one of the best players we had in stage one. And obviously, Fido was playing extremely well, you know, this weekend, but he was sort of the duo that, that just wasn't performing yesterday. He was the guy that really had to step it up. If they want to go through today and 2-0 both North American teams, he has to have a huge impact on their team. Obviously, he's slaying a little bit better than the other guys these guys picked, but still, I feel like you just expect more from him. He puts a lot of pressure on the map with Fida, but it's just those stats. They're just struggling right now. Those are your day two players that need to step it up. We'll see if they can up their game here. It is the final day of matches in our red group. Who is going to be moving on into the playoffs? That's the big question. We have a feeling it's going to be Luminosity. And speaking of Luminosity, they're on the stage right now, setting up for their first match against the boys from the UK in Fnatic. Fellas, we got about 60 seconds before this match kicks off. TP, let's start with your predictions. How do you see this playing out today? Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if Fnatic actually takes this first map on throwback. LG started off slow and hardpoint yesterday. It might happen again. But once they get warmed up in the second half of the map, they can just completely take off. I think LG will start to warm up. They'll take the series three to one. Yesterday, we saw it was Fnatic jumping out with a lead. They went to a round 11 in a game two before eventually losing the series 3-1. Momo, what's the score today? Uh, again, I think looking at the maps, I actually give the first one to Luminosity. I think Fnatic have been sometimes a little bit sloppy on that. I look at Breakout, and I couldn't really pick a worse S&D uh, Fnatic. I I've got to go 3-0 Luminosity. It's the safe bet, but I don't see it any other, any other way. And I think Sunny B, just turn up in that second one versus EG. I, I mean, if you're Fnatic, you're happy with the hard points you got, throwback and Scorch. I feel like that that sort of gets to their play style. But those other maps, even the S&D breakout, I feel like Luminosity is so good at it. Their precinct is unstoppable. 
again, if you want to beat Luminosity, you have to take at least one respawn and both search and destroys. I just don't see it happening. I'm going to go 3-0 Luminosity. Shout out to our stats producer, JP Krez. He just let me know that so far, Fnatic has only won one of their six games on throwback hardpoint. 20% win rate, not so good. They need to start off in a big way here and turn the tide around. Let's send it over to our casters. We got Maven there with Courage. Thank you, gentlemen. Chris, the other scary side of that is Luminosity has only dropped one hard point this weekend, but it was to Fnatic. Yes. So maybe uh, maybe they can repeat here from day two. That's the big thing to point out. Do not forget that first series was Fnatic striking with that map victory early on in hard point. Then a game two round 11 SD. We very well could have seen Fnatic go up 2 0 over LG and at least guarantee themselves a second search and destroy in that best of five. Unfortunately for them, they wound up dropping that round 11 and then the two consecutive maps after. The big story here, you know, we've talked about the final match between EG and Fnatic, and there's basically two ways this happens. If Fnatic somehow win this series, there's so much pressure on EG, they end up having to basically 3-0 at the end of the day. If Fnatic loses, it's most likely coming out of that head-to-head, -head. so EG certainly watching this one. Uh, just excited to see how it's going to break down, but let's get right into it. It's Scraps up top in a window trying to find some kills. And where the Fnatic team really gave a lot of pressure towards Luminosity, Yes, they struck first in the hard point, which I think is absolutely necessary in this best of five. They got smoked in uplink, which I thought was very interesting to see. This player right here on your screen, though, Wuskin, had a fantastic series. He was very consistent in the respawns, and that's been something that a lot of the casters and analysts have kind of harped on him for this year, is sometimes he goes big, other times it's like he's not even on the map. And to talk a little bit more about uplink, I mean, Fnatic has been solid there throughout the year. We saw yesterday when they got draw, you know, they were playing Frost. We knew that was going to be <laughs> nigh on impossible to take off a team like Luminosity. But I think any other map, uplink, they can play Luminosity tough. I think that might be where they're going to be able to sneak away a victory. Well, you even heard in the EG interviews we did where Havoc and crew just mentioned that they've always struggled against LG because of the aggression, the, uh, the all-out assault that LG likes to put on, especially in respawn game modes. Uplink on Frost can be extremely extremely overwhelming the pace that LG can play at. We saw on that map as well that Octane, who right now obviously has an NV4, was running an ERAD for a bit of it to help really keep that pressure going. We'll see if that plays out the same way as the series goes on. For right now, it's LG who have now gotten the break into Barn as they look to build on this lead. And LG, I mean, Octane still has been crushing, but probably not, not as high statistically as we saw him maybe at Stage 1 playoffs or Anaheim where he was putting up MVP numbers. It's been everybody else stepping it up, and really, it's been Saints. Saints is sitting around a 1.2 in respawn. KD, just shy of a 1.4 in search. It is unbelievable how good he's been. He doesn't need to put up the numbers he was putting up, right? When we just looked at the stats, every Every single player on this team not only has a 1.0 plus KD in respawns, it's like 1.1 plus yeah, for every yeah. single one of these guys, which is something that I've never even seen before in one of these events. If LG can continue to cruise with that throughout the rest of this year, we very well could be calling them not only champions of stage two, but potentially CWL champions in August. Uh, they're the favorites right now in my eyes, and I think uh, a lot of people at home. But speaking of Octane and Saints, both of them streaking right now. Four in a row for Octane, four in a row for Saints. We'll see if Octane can keep it going. You see on X-Ray, everybody on Fnatic is going to be pushing through mid-map, so it's going to be on Octane's teammates to try and pick that up as he wraps back to help. Yeah, Octane now just last alive. He should be cleaned up here quite quickly. Either way, the lead already up to 45 seconds. Thankfully for Fnatic, still early on in this game, Look at Wuskin, though. Wuskin, 3-9. and nine. This was not the same performance he was putting on when they first matched up where Luminosity were able to drop that hard point. And Sunny B, 4-10. and 10. He was just on that list of players that really l l let the analysts down yesterday. He's got to yeah. turn up as well. It's honestly, Scraps has been the only one kind of going off for me in the respawns. Everybody else just can't hurt you, right? You, you can't be double or triple negative. You need to at least be floating around even. Let Scraps kind of do the dirty work, find all those kills. I mean, he's had some of the most impressive performances and respawns we've seen all weekend. One thing to point out, right now, LG, if they stay at this pace, are on track to outslay Fnatic by 40 kills in this hard point. It's 101 to 34. Fnatic trying to push on through. I think they have a great chance at a break here. Yeah, as Wuskin has gone for the pinch, the three-piece, they are classic last alive. He's cut down. That's a big, big break right there for Fnatic on a money hill like baseball. And we always talk about this particular hard point. You have got to keep it close. You don't usually see gigantic swings on this map. So getting these next 25 points would be crucial and ensuring Luminosity didn't blow it open. I mean, if Luminosity got all the time on this particular hard point, they're kind of ending the game there if you yeah. get up 100 plus points. 
especially on a map like Throwback. It's yeah. one that typically large leads spell disaster for the team behind. It's not like Breakout where you have three or four money hills on that map where you can get a ton of time for your team. 116 to 51 is about the score going into the second rotation. And right now, Maven, again, it's simple as the kills on the map. It's where LG exceed, and it's why they have the 70-second lead. Yes, they've rotated to Bike Path first as well as Baseball, but even when they were out-rotated to Barn by Fnatic, they just straight up broke it on their first push with, with just winning gunfights. They, they really, really have. And I want to, if we can, swap over to Saints as he's coming off a of spawn just because he's 17 and 10. He's got significantly more kills than everybody in the lobby. I just want to sort of see what's going right with him this weekend. Well, hell, over the past month or two, he's been brilliant. And not only that, yes, he's 17 and 11, but look at that, he's got a minute plus in the hard point. Just doing it all. Well, when this team was formed with Saints on it, this was the performances they were wanting. This is why they wanted to add him to this roster. It's simple. Everyone knows how consistent he can be when he's on his game. He's now had three straight consistent events for this team. And you're seeing exactly what happens when that finally shows. 130, now to 70. Again, the kill feed entirely blue. You've already got slacked on your top left of your minimap, watching out for the overextension from Fnatic, killing everybody off spawn. This game's going to get out of hand quick. And as soon as Slack gets pushed, there's Saints there to back it up. He's going to wisely back down, get some time in the hard point, pull off this scarab and get what information he can. He's also very close to picking up reactive armor here. The lead continues to build for LG. There is a pinch opportunity right now. You have a three on three around the hard point. Is this where Fnatic can get the break? I think so, as they're about to surge on through. Wusk in there, Slacked as well in the kill feed. Slack, though, the two-piece again, wins the trade for his squad. And this is one of those tough things to cast, right? Is right now, LG, it, 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 they're just playing well, right? It, it, you look at what they're doing, everyone positive, everyone involved in the objective, they're playing their roles. And they're not, you know, taking full 60s on these hills. They're basically just winning, like, 40 to 20 on every hard point, right? They take, like, two-thirds of it, and they're just slowly building on their lead. Yeah. It's just almost at 100 seconds on this barn hard point. It's, they're not even doing anything flashy, maybe. They're I know. just playing at the top of their ability. And on the other side, it's like you're watching Fnatic slowly bleed out, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's gradually happening over the course of the game. And, you know, back to talk about Slack a little bit. You saw him get the two-piece there as he entered. I, I saw it so many times yesterday. We know how big multi-kills are when you're trying to break into hard points. He did it yesterday. I think three times in a row I saw him break out. They're flying in. It's a four-on-four -four retake. He's the guy that picks up two kills. Those two kills go a long way to making sure you can get control. Yep. Let's see if they can maintain it, though, here as they're contesting against Fnatic scraps tucked away in a corner. Fnatic, they're trying to do a better job of keeping top middle control, but as I say it, who's the one in top mid who wants to do something about it? Saints, the three piece. There's the fourth with the grenade and spots the two players off spawn as well. It, it's plays like that, man. Again, two piece from Classic. Now they're searching for wherever they're three spawning. Three from Classic. Everyone can be a playmaker. And now when you have Classic putting up the numbers he has, with Saints being this consistent, when you look at Octane's numbers and they're not as flashy as they were at the last event in Anaheim, it's because everyone is playing out of their mind. They yeah, really, really are. Classic camo to work with as well. But th that was crazy to see. I mean, Saints, four piece. Right after that, Classic with a three piece. It's just everyone on the team has potential to do plays like that, where who do you rely on that with Fnatic? I mean, Scraps will do it from time to time. But how many times have you even looked at the bottom left and saw a multi kill come through for Fnatic? It's yeah. so far and in between. Luskin does spot the player with camo, but unfortunately, Classic's still able to break on through the two piece onto Tommy. They know where the final player is in the hard point. Streaks now being earned for Classic as well. It's slacked again in a situation where he can win the overall trade for his team if he gets this kill. Thankfully for Fnatic, though, they did get those close blue spawns, so they will be able to contest yet again. And, I mean, the good thing for Fnatic, this is just one map. You've got a long series to go, and ultimately you are going to probably control your own destiny when it comes down to it in the final series. But, God, man, pulling out a victory here would be so, so crucial. You just haven't been able to get beyond that 70, 80-point lead that Luminosity has enjoyed for pretty much the entire game. One more multi-kill. Classic gets three as he comes in with camo, comes right back off on and picks up a few. This Luminosity team is just terrifying. They most certainly are. Now on board, though, with Fnatic, we can see exactly what's going wrong for him. Top middle, again, three dead. Again, being forced to spawn out and try to fight from the back foot. They also don't have the side of the map they want for the barn rotation in just 50 seconds. Cheeky little two-piece there from Sunny B as he's going to try to fly forward with this ERAD. We've questioned some of his aggressive play with the ERAD this weekend. Right now, though, trying to do what he can to at least keep these ARs out of power positions and top ticket. Yeah, and Sunny B, you know, you, you mentioned he started a bit slow, but he's come alive. He's gotten back towards even. Uh, again, a statistic that's not going to be hurting you. It's you got Tommy and Wuskid now kind of dragging the team down. The other two, Sunny B and Scraps, they're doing what they can, but 
the problem is, yeah, you, you mentioned the, how lopsided the slang was. You talked about that five minutes ago. It, it's only grown. Yeah, and now it's 212 to 149, getting to that point where the game's basically out of reach on throwback. When we talk about this map and why it's so much tougher to come back on, it's because of how close of these spawns you can get. You can go ahead and try to break these setups, you know, five times in one hill on this map. That is not the case well, on, on Retaliation. Well, where you can it's a size thing. Yeah. It's, it's half the size of Retaliation. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, it might even be less. It could be it's three throwbacks might be able to fit in Retaliation. It's just purely a size thing. Like you said, you can flood and flood and flood. You get so many more opportunities to try and break. And when you give a team like LG, you know, five opportunities to break instead of two, most times they're going to get it done. Scraps with camo. You still have Classic with his streaks, which I'm expecting him to bring out as we move towards Bike Path, if it goes there. Thankfully, Fnatic will be able to cross through this field area to at least get bodies inside the hard point yet again. That was Camo. That is Camo dying. 10 seconds left. Luminosity looking to close the door here. The barn door, one would say. Oh, gosh, that was abysmal, just like the gameplay we're seeing right now. 250 to 158. That'll do it for game one. LG, I'll tell you, Maven, that was just dominance from start to finish. It's tough to say much else than that. One team playing better than the other team. You can say all you want. LG, just the far superior squad in that map. Yeah, the scoreline doesn't even reflect it because it's it's, it's kind of easy, like you said, to have that 40-20 breakdown and throwback because you get so many cracks at it. Yep. If that if, if the slang was that lopsided, lopsided on another hard point, that could have very easily been like a 250-100, 250-80 type game. It, the scoreline wasn't even as, I guess, reflective of the domination you yeah. got from Luminosity. And what I love, too, from LG right there is even when it came down to certain areas where they, you know, they'd get broken and there'd be 15, 20 seconds left on the hard point, they would just give that to Fnatic, rotate to the next, once again, get those first 40 seconds, always playing for the new hill. They had one moment where they spawned up at blue near baseball with 10 seconds left in the hard point. Instead of going back and even getting that time, they just reflooded for middle. That was on that final rotation, flipped the spawns again and got themselves in the right position. Well, so far, so good for LG. Fnatic, last time they played Search and Destroy, they were able to push it to around 11, came up a little bit short. Yep. This is the map they have to take. If you don't, this is likely looking like a 3L, but we'll see if they can take one off of LG. Um, but LG, again, like, the search improvements, they, uh, they're they 85% this weekend at hard point, 70%, I believe, at uplink, and 60% in search. <laughs> you don't get more, I guess, well-rounded or more. It's not even well-rounded. It's just those are incredible numbers when you're taking a look at a body of work from all your game modes. Yeah, well, I know uh, as we get ready for game number two, we end up having a chance to sit down with one of these teams and talk about what it means to them to be in stage two. Coming to stage two, I think our team focuses is obviously making playoffs. Season one, we didn't make playoffs. We felt that we played well, like going to the Sunday of season one. Everyone was two for two, so anybody could have won, but unfortunately we got relegated. But yeah, going to this season, 100% is the goal is playoffs. Like if you're not in stage two, I'd say if you're like these people who are LCQ this weekend, practice they're getting compared to what we're getting, non-existent. Qualifying for stage two playoffs would mean a lot to us because I feel like we got like fairly unlucky in season one when everybody going into Sunday was two and two. But we didn't we didn't see up on the Sunday, so it's probably our bet, my best achievement this year, yeah. I believe if we're able to make playoffs this time round after going from relegation, um, it would show that our group was a lot harder than people actually expected it to be, and it was shown. And it will show that we we are capable of making it, and we are better than most people think. You hear them mention that two and two scoreline they had in series heading into Sunday in Stage One. They find themselves in the exact same scenario here. Yes, they do have a little bit of an advantage, Maven, coming into this up a series victory over the likes of Mind Freak as well as EG. But again, all eyes will be on that 6.30 match tonight where we expect both of these teams to go into it between EG and Fnatic, sitting at two and three. Everything will weigh on that match. That's exactly what we want. I mean, you know, a double round robin, it's definitely a, one of the fairer formats for the players. You know, you get two cracks at teams. It's, it, it spreads out the weekend. There's a lot lot more gameplay here to improve upon things, maybe from a first matchup. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's we love running into the scenarios where it's, it's coming down to that head to head at the oh, end. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want somebody getting on map count. I want somebody having to beat someone to get through. And that uh, more than likely is what we're going to look at tonight. It's made for some of the more dramatic moments so far in the CWL Global Pro League presented by PS4. We are heading into Search and Destroy next. Fnatic the last time brought it all the way to around 11. This was how they started their weekend. 0 and 3 in SND round 11s going into midday Saturday. Yes, they have gotten a, a map victory now in Search and Destroy, which all the way went to round 10. These guys have not had, a, had an easy fight so far in Search and Destroy. They've had to fight for every single round they can get. 
And they need uh, they need the twins to turn it up. You know, I asked Tommy in their interview yesterday, like, how, how much easier does it make it when you win early? Because, you know, they're passionate guys. You hear them getting loud, standing up, screaming. Yeah. It's like, it makes it a lot easier when we start a series strong and they, you know, they're into it, passionate. It's a lot different when you lose the first map, especially you lose it in a frustrating manner like that, where it just didn't seem like you really had a chance throughout the game. You have to just turn that off prep right now for this breakout and break out a map you know it's uh, it's newer newer to the rotation at this point um, but I know LG speaking to them this is one where they took a lot of strats from Anaheim from uh, the era squad that they played in in pools and they improved drastically just at Anaheim I'm curious to see what they're gonna bring here all eyes are on classic for me on this map I want to see how he plays inside that showers area as well as being you know one of the more aggressive players on this team when it comes down to getting that that objective what does Tommy and crew do on Fnatic? They need this map victory, or else I think this is a quick 3-0. And we saw last night when it was LG versus EG, they were on Crusher. And one of the tough things on that map, it's difficult to spread out players. It, it makes it easy for LG to kind of hunt as a pack, per se. And they're some of the best in the business at trading out those kills and working together as a, a four-man unit. This map, you do have to spread out significantly more. But Saints and Slack opening things up very, very quickly. Wuskin at least able to answer back with one. But advantage will fall to Luminosity. Yeah, now look at how far spread. They, they couldn't be further from each other on the map. Sunny B is. I don't think LG have any clue. And do they know that the bomb is down? I do believe so. Yeah, they have at least Octane waiting by that objective. Great information there for Wuskin. They're calling out two players heading towards that locker side. And he's starting to wrap back to try and maybe get to his team. And it looks like he's still going to hold towards Helipad. There's 40 seconds left, so they have a good amount of time to work with. The issue is, like you said, where the bomb is currently at. You just keep an, arrow, uh, keep an eye right now on the arrows on that minimap. Wuskin likely going to be shot in the back in just a moment. He's able to get away with his life, but some information coming through for LG as they're able to spot it. Now at least the, the tandem here, Fnatic, has been able to group up. Now they just need to somehow find Ooh. a kill, stay alive, see if they can get away. Sunny B charges on through. There was one tucked away in the corner. He's been tagged up. He's almost a couple players body stacking for him. Wuskin, though, not having an angle there. He can finish it up. The trucks end up providing fantastic cover, and this round should be over very quick. And, and right there, LG just start to swarm the final player, right? A lot of teams, they would know he's got no time to plan and would send Octane, who's sitting by that bomb, to run. Instead here, Octane just sprints at Wuskin and challenges. Obviously, Wuskin, you don't think he's going to get the three kills there, but in any sort of scenario, if teams aren't playing with confidence, they're sending that guy as far away as possible to make sure there's no chance in hell a three-piece could happen. Well, I think the final shot you saw of Luminosity after the round tells the story of the, the confidence they're playing with. Just laughs all around, smiles. They know they're the best team this weekend, and they're proving it. The first thing I hear when I walk over to the player warm-up area is Classic just roasting Octane in, in their warm-up, saying, like, oh, this guy's shooting terribly today. He's going to be trash. <laughs> they're just having fun. Simple as that, and they're showing it right now on the map. They are trying to push forward, and Fnatic have a ton of information, at least with the map coverage they have. They know how many players are here at this site, and still Slack gets first blood. Yep, back-to-back -back first bloods, now for Luminosity. You're not going to win this game, too, if you're constantly fighting from behind. Wuskin able to get it through the smoke. I'm surprised Classic stayed to keep challenging that one yeah. and didn't just back down in the medical bay. No, that was definitely not needed right there. You have a number advantage. No need to challenge Saints with the objective, and because of that kill, Wuskin doing a great job of staying alive and forcing LG to maneuver back around the map. Where do they try to push from? It looks like loading will be their first area that they flood on through. Yeah, so Scraps, you saw tuck away in a nice corner here. If he does fight Octane, this should be a fight he's certainly able to take, but he doesn't even get to it as Wuskin cuts him down from behind. Now all going to fall on Saints. Saints has had some incredible plays. I don't know what he... <laughs> like he picks up a, what, Thermal Envy 4 at the end there? Uh, yeah, that, that, that was their goal. You saw the smoke grenade get thrown down outside Med Bay. They were trying to pick the player in the back of the map that was Wuskin with that Thermal AR, but we already saw earlier in the round that Wuskin just pre-fired the smoke and killed Classic. So interesting strategy brought out here by LG. Maybe showing off some well, now, now you know, I little tricks they have up their sleeve. Well, now I at least understand maybe why Classic stuck around a little bit longer than he should have. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, if you're Wuskin, all they have is a doorway to shoot through. You yeah. might as well just pre-fire that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right, round three, tied up at one to one. If you're just joining us, welcome. It's day three of stage two, and this could be our first best of five. We got four matches for you today. There's a lot of there's a lot of names that go into the name of the CWL. The Call of Duty World League, yeah, Global Pro League. Presented by PS4, it's Group Red, Day 3, Stage 2, <laughs> Championship Sunday, Match 1. It's overwhelming, but you know we had, what? We had to work together to get all that out. Yeah, right? <laughs> and look, look, Scraps, they just have to fall back. They're just going to fall back, reset the map again. 
But LG, they love to stack three inside showers and then have Octane be the one watching out for not only middle, but as well as B. He's rotated back and forth. If you're Fnatic right now, I don't even see how you begin to break on through. The outer wall runs being watched by Slack. You've got Classic in the site. You've got Saints picking up middle map. Yeah, Fnatic just have to back up. There you go. 30 seconds left. Their hand has been forced towards this B site. I remember both first rounds. The first blood did go to Luminosity. Fnatic able to win down a man in the previous round. So little time left here. And guy. because middle map is controlled by LG, look at how fast they can rotate over from Classic. He's already there. Before Fnatic have even had a chance to get around the map, they're in position. They're going to try to kill this player off the plant. Scraps now dead. Ten seconds left. Fnatic have to charge forward. LG are all there. That is the setup they love to have on this map, Maven. And remember, prior to this map, I touched on Classic being important. It's because he's the one that has to stay alive on that site inside showers. He's the guy with the ERAD who's basically the first line of defense stopping Fnatic from pushing Well, through. it reminds me a little bit in, in a way of Crusher in the sense that, you know, Octane will kind of hold mid. He'll see if they cross, and then they can rotate so, so quickly and retake. There's no hesitation. They just soar in and take control. And as long as they have mid dominated like that, I mean, the map is theirs. Yep. They're going to look to do it again here. Octane, typically, yeah, he, so he high wall runs and checks to see who exactly floods towards that mid spiral. What are they watching? What are they watching? Fnatic, what are you watching? Lo is, they're watching loading together. That is just questionable to say the least. A miscommunication there. They give up the easiest wall run in the world. Like, think about it from the other POV. We just saw from LG's POV is Classics holding the bomb. There's nowhere you can go from Fnatic. There's yeah. two people in there. You see it from the opposite POV. Like, <laughs> what is Fnatic doing? I don't know what just happened. Wuskin at least makes it a 1v2. Now being challenged. Octane, he's waiting for Saints to hit this wall run, at least catch up to him. Oh, you finish that kill, you give yourself a chance. Oh he gets both God. players one shot. I, those are those situations where, you know, if you don't miss a bullet, you win that round. Yep. I, I mean, that just it comes down to kind of a skill thing. And it, it, obviously, this is a high stress situation, but that was winnable for Wuskin. That's because LG made it very winnable. They, they gave him a chance to get both those kills. Big blunder at the start of that round. You cannot have both players turning and watching that. Super confused as to why the, the, the player was watching the door closer to their spawn. Because obviously, the guy who was watching that loading area from that left door would have seen the person it, cross over to the right and they could have easily reacted. It just looks silly. Yeah. It, whenever someone's just coming in that early in a round with, you know, seeing the backs of two players. But uh, here we go. Round number five Luminosity enjoying a 3 1 advantage. Wow. Waskin's got to back on up. Saints with first blood. They do get the plant, but this is where LG are at their best, right? They, they, they four-man retake a site. It's, uh, what? It's, uh, every round's been a first blood for Luminosity so far, right? Just watch the LG arrows. Look at how they check every corner. They stay active together on the map. One, someone should hit this low, lower wall run. It's going to be Wuskin in the back again, trying to make sure they can't push on. Here we come. <laughs> and they just swarm on in. Octane guns the last one, and there they drop. They're so good when they have four players up at retaking. Any, any advantage, hell, even if it's an even scenario, they're good at it. Up a man, you don't have much of a chance there. It's, uh, it's just what they can do right now. Pretty simple as that. They finally figured it out. It took, it took eight months. Why this team was formed so long ago, it, 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 it's taken them a while, but now, that, now they're fully on track. Saints is consistent again. They're good in S&D now. I genuinely, right now, I think, I think you can make an argument that outside of Optics 23-0 map run we saw earlier this year, this is the strongest I've seen a team play in Infinite Warfare. Oh, yeah. I mean, because it's, it's been, what, a month straight, basically. Yeah, the final from playoffs. I mean, we've never seen a team where all four players can put up a 1.1 plus respawn KD. No, yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. We'll see if they can keep it going here in this game. It's, okay. Well, this so, always happens. Hey, hey, well, no, well, well, stop. It's been all first blood still for LG. Yeah, even <laughs> even to their own team. Why, w w are they the worst team in the game at calling in scarabs? I think they might be. I don't know. Can we stat track that stat somehow? Yeah, JP, if you hear us, look up scarab team kills, please. Or suicides. Yeah. There you go. Then that's what leads to the first round for Fnatic. Yeah, take take that one. Or sorry, second round for Fnatic. Take that one. So they've won. Think about it. They've won a 3v4 for Fnatic where they clutched up. And now, now they get gifted here with the scarab kill. I'm actually impressed. How, how every s &D, is there always a, t a, a team kill Scarab or a suicide with a Scarab? At this point, I feel like they're just doing it on purpose. It could be. They're trying to create a meme. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're going into round seven. Fnatic 
keeping it as close as they can. And they're going to split this one two middle, two at the wall run. And this just looks so similar to what we see on Crusher from Luminosity. You'll see one player kind of controlling mid Noctane, the other three it's never grouping together. It's, it's, that, that is never going to work. I, I, I will tell you right now that is that that is never going to work. They will never take the A site on this map. Simple as that. Just get get away from it. Just go. If you watch how f Luminosity play it, it's a well-oiled machine. Slack, slow wall runs, and watches the flank. Watch he watches the low wall run flank, right? If Fnatic try to sneak someone through, so that's all. That's his only job is to watch that back door. Saints, they make sure he's in front, and he just slides straight to the site. Just, he trusts Classic right there to win that one-on-one -on -one gunfight, and he watches the loading door. Octane's got their entire mid lane, right, and then. Classic slides out of the bomb. Right there, gets that easy kill. If Fnatic go towards the other side, go towards B, okay, LG will just four-man retake that. Unbelievable stuff. And uh, as much as it was a frustrating game one for Fnatic, you got to feel similar here for him, just finding it so tough to get any kind of advantage. You, you literally, the only time you've had an advantage in a round to start off was when the team kill happened. Every single other round you've been down a man Except it just makes it impossible to win. Except this one where Fnatic do have a great setup. This is finally a round that they're going to take full control of. It's shocking what happens when you uh, get the advantage early in the round. It is. Octane about to be swarmed. Oh, goes to the reload at the worst time possible. Nice round for Fnatic. They stay in this game, bring it back to 5-3. It, it's actually crazy that they're still in it, I, I feel like, you know, just based on how a lot of these pushes have happened and how dominant the first bloods have been for LG. They're still giving themselves a chance. We know they, they fought from behind to push themselves to several round 11s where they haven't, you know, had the best of luck so far this weekend. Well, let's see if they can win a couple more here. Push it to the... They have to win this game, too. They absolutely have to. Keep moving forward in this one. Saints does have his payload. More close to being earned for LG. So there goes, here, there goes the opening strategy. Look at those three blue arrows on the bottom of the map. Slack the six, he's the furthest back. The player eight, who's Saints, slides right to the close door and Classic holds the bomb. This is, this is their setup, they do it every single time with Octane watching middle. I would just put a big X on that area of the map and just... It's like, it's like EG on throwback s and where they're spawning at back market, where you have Nagafin go for that snipe. They do the same thing every single time. I like this stuff from Fnatic. They're just going to play it slow this time instead of hitting it. Maybe bait out a rotation from LG, which See, is exactly what happened. Now the call comes in. Now you can go in and get it. Yes. Th this, is, this is the type of stuff you've been waiting for for Fnatic, right? Now they go ahead and take control of this site. They put themselves in a great position. My biggest issue right now is the low wall run potential hit from LG. They do have Tommy back there. 4v4 retake. Here it goes. Saints goes in, gets two kills. It's going to be on Waskin and Tommy now to try and make a play. Thought about picking up the bomb for just a moment, but the oh, call out, they're both coming from Commissary. He peeks the edge, should be someone behind to finish it up. But quickly, it's a one versus one. The FDL, the FDL from Tommy. Ooh. Wow, what a play. I thought that was it for this search and destroy, but Fnatic coming up clutch. Look at from this Waskin. from Waskin. The hip fire up close. Melts him right there, and they live to see another round. Nice 4v2, or, uh, well, really, realistically, 3v4 clutch from the side of Fnatic. And, you know, Octane knew he had that gunfight. He, he's, he hops out, he's like, yeah, this guy's dead. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's jettisoned into your face. Nice word. Yeah, you know, I, I read the dictionary. No, you don't. No, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, the sniper tries to challenge Octane there. And, yeah, you've got to get away from that one. Scraps, there you go. Another first blood towards Fnatic. You know, we talked about their struggles on this side. This time they do get it done. There's still one player remaining. Can Slack somehow turn the tides back for LG? He's managed to get a kill and stay alive in an unreal circumstance. Now he's trying to get back off the wall run. Octane tries to slide in to help him, but it's slacked out by himself. Somehow, again, we're going to get ourselves to around 11. Did I say it too early? You might have. You have to remember, Tommy's got a sniper, and he's nowhere near his teammate. Oh, but Slack just lost him. If Slack, if Slack still saw Wuskin, I think this is an easy round win. He's going to get peeked from window. The timing could not be worse. Almost guns him. But not able to win the gunfight. Fnatic, they're staying alive. Another round 11. We already know they lost the first one to LG. They've won, what, three rounds in a row now to get to this point? Oh, Tommy. What do you do? What do you do here if you're Fnatic? I like the slower play when they're on offense make LG kind of play mind games with themselves, rotate too early when they see nothing. 
I think the more you think LG think and move is the <laughs> better off yeah, you right? are, right? So I want to see them play passive. I want to see them wait. Let's see if they do a similar strat. I mean, I, they should. They should do a similar strat. But you look at look at the defensive stack from LG. Far different than what we saw. You have a three strack, a three sack mid map. It's not all going to be towards A. Well, A's open for right now. When you have a team play passive in middle, right? Then guess what? I'll just stack mid and can easily rotate to either site. Thankfully for Fnatic, the Scarab is doing a great job of forcing LG to stay away from the site, and they will get the plant down 4v4. It all comes down to this. It's been a story of first bloods thus far. LG controlled it early. Fnatic finally started to get it going. Who's going to find the opening pick for either side? Slack looking like he wants to peek in. He doesn't have FTL to work with. The first kill answered right back, though. Sunny B gets one. It's traded. It's 3v3. The hunt is on. Slack and Classic pushing on forward. Saints there to work with them as well. They're all bunched up on the site, just trying to oh. find the kills. He looks vertical, not able to do it. Saints now by himself in a one versus two. He's getting tagged up, and Fnatic pulls it out. Wow. Clutch four rounds in a row for Fnatic, and that right there is what they needed to do earlier on this weekend when they faced LG. Well, I think they did exactly what they needed to. It, early in the game, it felt like they were just playing into what LG wanted to do, right? Yes. Finally, it seemed, what, three rounds prior, they're like, oh, okay. We, we, wait, you're telling me we can also control the pace? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're going to stop sprinting forward. That was beautiful. That was beautiful basically stuff. it. Yeah, that's exactly Merc, what it is. Merc agrees. Yeah, if Merc agrees, then we, we know we sort of understand what's going on. Yep. But no, that's that's incredible, incredible stuff from Fnatic. Um, you know, it may not be a scenario where map counts matters down the stretch, but still, you give yourself a chance in this series to come back. You know, you took the hard point in the first series. Now you bring the search and destroy. They struggled in the uplink, the game three, but it was Frost. I think I give them a fighting chance, really, on a any other map. A precinct? I think precinct will be map three, and then either way, we go to a game four hard point. At this point, we've already seen Fnatic beat LG in a hard point before, so we know that's possible. LG have looked untouchable in uplink, so if I had to pick one, I'd honestly say I think Fnatic have a better chance in hard point. Okay. Then, then an uplink in this best of five, but either way, they have to win a respawn to force another SD, which I think will be their key to victory. I think we're going to have one hell of an uplink. It's game three, and it's coming up next after this quick break.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your G Fuel key player matchup between Fnatic and Luminosity. So far this weekend, Wuskin has edged out Saints in the stat line in Uplink itself, but it's Saints and crew who have done a great job of clutching up in the respawn game modes the first time these teams met up. It was LG who dominated Fnatic 13 to five on the first map that they played, but Wuskin and crew just clutched up around 11. They've got the momentum. They've got to carry that here if they want to potentially not only take the series, but force a game five where they have their best chance of beating LG. We'll see if they can do it here in Uplink. This has been your G Fuel Key Player Matchup. If they're going to make a movie about my life, I'd say the actor would be Will Smith. Tom Holiday? Tom Hardy. But he couldn't play me. Come on, what's his name? He was in Wall Street, and he had the really white teeth and the stupid glasses. Jonah Hill? Yeah, him. I'd have Jonah Hill. I uh, wouldn't be too serious with it. Bit of a funny guy. Quite big as well, so why not? I'd have Kramer play as me. I'd pick George Clooney, even though he seems so old. I'd probably cast Jason Statham, which is my favorite actor. Or Robert Downey Jr. Oh, my God. But yeah, probably Robert Downey Jr. He, I feel like he just has that sarcastic, like, tone to him that I do. I, I feel like that fits pretty well. Oh, I love seeing the guys have a bit of fun. Jack, who would play you? If there was a movie based on your life. Ooh. Movie based on my life. Going oh, Natalie Portman. Wow. That one came from straight out of left field. Uh, I think she's blonde, actually in good shape. She's, she's a female. She's, she's blonde? Is she, oh, no. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of Scarlett Johansson. What, sorry, I got the way too mixed up. What? Is yelling. Sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place. Yeah, let's, let's just let's just fast forward now. It's just uh, Natalie Portman, would, the blonde bombshell. Who would play you? Who would play me? Vince Vaughn. Wow. Okay, you need to get rid of the, well, his hair for the. Well, we're both like we're both like six three, six five. He's like a tall guy. You know, we're both uh, we have a pretty good sense of humor. Questionable. Great com great comedic timing. Oh God. A great smile. Handsome. I'll be honest. I apologize for thinking Natalie Portman was blonde. Yeah, that was awful. It was. Okay. Now let's look forward to the series here. Uh, game three. We're looking at it. You know, uh, I was mentioning. I thought this is where Fnatic had a pretty solid chance. Yes. Talking to Pocket in the desk in between matches. When you look since Dallas. Precinct uplink in particular, they're both right hovering around a 60, 63% win rate. So okay. both very solid at this. I wouldn't be surprised if that's maybe on the little bit of a, the weaker end for LG, just since they usually average like 70% plus in their respawns. Yep. But still, this is, uh, I think, where Fnatic can certainly get a victory. They got a bad draw yesterday on Frost versus them. I, uh, I think Fnatic can pull this out. It's pretty simple. It's winnable. Just like the two series they've had so far against LG have been, right? They just need to clutch up like they did again in that search and destroy. They win that round 11. Something they've yet to do this weekend. They're now one for four. Maybe Championship Sunday is all that they needed to get on track. Heading into Precinct, Uplink Maven, you mentioned you think this is their must-win map. Oh, after hearing those stats, I think my mind's been changed a little bit. I think I agree with you. I think this is the map that they have to take. Even if they lose the hard point, at least they see a game five SD. I just don't take a ton of stuff. I know they beat them in one hard point, but LG's just so, so good at it. It's hard for me to think they're going to take a second. This is where they need to do it and push it to a game five, in my opinion. Let's see. If they can, it's a oh. nice start. Great start. All of LG down. They're already set up here, pushing from Cat Statue. Ding, dong, bling, the duck is home. No, oh, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, oh my God. No. Maven. Oh. Maven. You what? just jinxed that. That was the worst thing I've ever seen. What did you even, bing, bong, ding, no dunk. <laughs> that's like that's like Kobe goes in for a dunk and jumps over the backboard. No, I think he, I think he got body blocked. I is think, that what it was? I think LG jumped into the portal. And just like that, now Slack will go through. How on earth is LG oh. up two to zero? The body stack comes in. I thought for a second he hovered just a little bit over it. But yeah, even if your toe touches that, you're getting points. Hell, good defense from Luminosity. Even better offense as the defense becomes offense and LG takes control. I, I don't even know what just happened off that break. LG send like two players towards gas, win their gunfights, and realize they have to go all the way back to their spawn. Then because the players spawn up in that back apartment's area, they just instinctively jump into the portal, body block Wuskin, I believe that was with the drone. 
rally it forward with a score of their own, and now where you thought Fnatic were not only going to be up 2-0, but had a potential for yeah. a rally, it's now 2-0 LG. It, it's a 4-0, it's a four-point swing. Yeah. It, it's unbelievable. That's how the game starts. And uh, you just have to make sure you, you just forget about it, because that's a very, very frustrating moment for Fnatic. You have to brush it off early. You can't let it tilt you the rest of the game. We've, we've seen stuff like that happen to teams, right? Uh, something goes horribly wrong in the opening 60 seconds. It's like that's sitting in their mind the rest of the game. Oh, yeah. And Classic gets three there. 10 and 3 already from Classic. Double the kills of anybody else in the lobby. And he's just. His team's no. His team was nowhere near him. He was just sprinting into Fnatic's base with no drone. Okay, Classic. I think we can calm down a little bit there, buddy, as now his teammates will be in a 2v3 scenario as a Fnatic do push back into lobby and take control of the drone spawn. Well, you know, with Classic's role, he relies a lot on his teammates in the sense that yeah, he's the first guy in. He's the one having to win a lot of those really hard one-on-one -on -one fights, one-on-two fights when you're soaring in first. When he's feeling it, man, and if he's on the same pace as his team, we know what he's capable of. He can drop absolutely bombshells when it comes to statistics. We'll see if he keeps the pace, that, uh, well, the crazy pace he said early in this one, Jack. Well, again, the NV4 inside that lobby room, not the best, and it's shown right there as Saints charges on him with the K-Bar. LG putting such a focus towards this gas out of the map. I, I want to talk to him about it after this series is done and hear exactly what has kind of forced this. Is it because of Luskin staying alive in top station with that NV4? Or are they just more confident we're pushing towards this area of the map? I have, I have never seen a team put so much emphasis on this one side. They like the tree. They're big fans of Cherry Blossom. Oh, Ooh. yeah, and Fist of Fury as Tommy gets one. No, tries to snap back on Classic, but the, the walls were caving in there as all of LG was starting to surround him in the restaurant. They still have Drone in hand. Scraps tries to get a flank on, ends up working out as he picks up Octane, but they've just been stuck here. They haven't been able to push out the backside and turn this into points. Classic gets a kill. Saints in on the action as well. Drone has been dropped. There's still one Fnatic player here. There's a second one on the backside. It's going to force him to back down. Oh. Oh. Slack's trophy system oh. Oh. just killed Slack. Just killed Classic. They have some of the weirdest deaths, man. The Centurion trophy, <laughs> because it does like one point of damage, just killed, just killed his teammate. That's impressive. Well, you know, we talked about the need for Waskin to really step up uh, in this series and this weekend in general. He's 15 and 8 right now. And he's sitting back, you know, he has the NV4, he's picking up a lot of kills. The question is, can the guys in front kind of open things up? Because you haven't had a really good opportunity for attack since that opening push. Everything just being traded back and forth here by statue. Yeah, both players on pace for 30 plus kills in this game. LG, they shut down the plays towards the statue side, and now finally, they'll move the drone down the typical route you see teams bring it. 4v3, now a 4v2. Wuskin's been spotted, not eliminated, but the damage has been done as LG will now push forward and look for at least a one-point play. They should get it. Yep. There it is, 3-0 advantage. Scraps gets three kills, but just a little too late. It will clear out the base, allow them to reset, at least avoid any kind of spawn trap from that deadly side. Wow. I think this whole half is dictated by that first dunk play, because if that doesn't happen, obviously Fnatic are up 2-1, to one, but look at the slang you're getting from Fnatic. They're right now out slaying LG, going for the one, intercepted at the end. That's a frustrating side if you are Fnatic. You play very well, you keep the pressure on LG, you force them to take unorthodox routes to get towards your base, and still you go down by two possessions. And that's just, I mean, I've, we've used that word a lot, just frustrating, because that's, that's kind of how I felt during the most of the game one. That's how I felt during game two until they kind of turned it on and started to mold the, the pace of the game to their liking. I, I, that, for me, is probably the best first side you could get from Fnatic when scoring towards that area, and they're still down by three points. Well, let's see what they can do off the opening break. We know they started brilliantly the first time through. You can see Classic, it's crucial he's having a monster game as well, since he, he's going to breathe and get camo at this point. Yeah. And he opens up with a kill onto Wuskin. The drone, though, trying to be pushed out the backside. Unfortunately, Slack there to slow it down for a moment. This is points. You might have a dunk here. I don't know if he realizes it. Uh, it's probably going to be a one-point play. There's the one. All right, so you get it through. You score early. Much better start to this half. Yeah, this time they didn't worry about getting that dunk. They just said, let's get the point we can get. Let's go ahead and get on the board. Sunny B still staying alive. And his job, try to spawn trap Saints, though, with a big gunfight victory. We'll let his teammates push on out of that back gas alley. But still, look at Fnatic already with the drone. They've had map positioning for probably 70 to 80% of this game so far, Maven. 
Yeah, they really, really have. Dunk. It's been it's been a phenomenal effort, and there you go, Fnatic. Brilliant stuff. Now tied at three to three. Shook off that first half. They come firing in the second. You can see why they have been, you know, one of the better teams in Europe. When you talk about specifically uplink, this has been a great game. Very few people, do I understand them being able to control the tempo of a search and destroy versus LG? Yes. But very few teams can control the tempo in a respawn versus them. They're doing just that. Wuskin, 20 and 13. Octane, the other NV4 player in the lobby at 9 and 16. Bell tells a big story of how this game is playing out so far. Also, in my opinion, Fnatic doing a better job as playing as a four-man unit right now, moving together on the map, pushing out one lane as a squad. And I think it shows in how much map positioning they've earned themselves throughout this game. Okay, well, let's see if Luminosity can't answer back, Jack. Tommy, though, with that NV4 wins against an ERAD in that close hallway. Nice gunfight victory for him. Octane, though, unfortunately, the next guy he's going to face up against can't win it, but Scraps is there to back him up. This is actually really funny to watch. If you look at this minimap, LG keep expecting, like, a pinch from Fnatic or a flank to come in. No, Fnatic haven't done that at all this game. They've just been pushing the same exact spot, staying together as a four-man team. There's four unanswered points now in the, in the first two minutes of the second half. I want to see LG now make adjustments. They keep on thinking that there's going to be someone coming from behind from Fnatic, and it just has not happened. Well, this is this is why I wasn't surprised. Like, Fnatic could take this. Like, we've been talking about it all year, that some of the North American Elite teams have struggled against European squads in Uplink. I mean, think back to the, what, the first day of Dallas. I remember it was uh, it was EU versus NA for, like, six matches. EU won every single one of the Uplinks. I was like, what the hell is going on? Talk to the guys, and they're like, they play a little bit of a different style. You know, they're typically better at consistently sending flankers. Their communication is better. They play a little bit more selfless as far as just getting the drone forward, finding the kills, and working together as a unit. I think you're seeing a lot of that going their way right now. Right now, LG being outslayed by seven kills in this map. It's not a lot, but it's enough. Fnatic can come to life inside two. They finally getting the, started getting the scores off of all the map positioning they were getting themselves. Two versus three. Here comes that pinch from Tommy. Finally, it starts to happen, and the player actually misses him. Classic jumps right over him for a second, nearly spells disaster. Doesn't happen there. No camo used as of yet. So you've got camo for both sides. Could be a tool for LG to come back to this game or a tool for Fnatic to build on this lead. And let's just remind people at home what's on the line here right now. I mean, Luminosity not, not really concerned too much with their start. They're looking good for, you know, placing top two and playing in the playoff. But for Fnatic, if you can win this series, you put an unreal amount of pressure onto Evil Geniuses going into the final match tonight. And you just tacked on two more points. Wow. They have... They've just been the better team this entire game. Yeah. Like, there's only been a few moments where you're Luminosity. This might be your third chance to attack, and it's going to be on camo. I mean, the first one's hard to even count because it was just a crazy counterattack off a sloppy play. But And that, that, for me, was a questionable camo from Classic. He had two players still behind him as his lead blocker. No enemy was even beginning to shoot at him. He knew three were still dead from Fnatic and still pops the payload right there. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Well, the good news is you still have Octane, and he's going to have Overdrive to work with. But there's only 50 seconds left, and you can see the game plan right now is a oh, bit of keep gosh. away. They want to play keep away. This can be deadly, though. Hey, just make sure you get the toss out <laughs> if the pressure does come. And they're just wasting the clock. Octane and crew have to go hunting. There will he didn't get it out. He didn't get, he didn't it out. get the drone exactly out. Exactly what I was talking about. Oh, the overdrive. He gets cut at the edge. That's exactly what I meant by saying it's a little bit risky. You have to get it out. But now Tommy pops his own overdrive, wraps the edge. A one-point toss if he could get in range would have been would have been the end of the game. Well, basically, I, I think the big thing to point out was I think Octane was just a surprise he didn't get the drone out of the map. Waskin, Waskin, what a lights out performance from him so far. 33 and 20. 33 kills. That's it. Wasking going huge. Seven, five, Fnatic. It was at times sloppy. It was at times beautiful. But when it mattered most down the stretch, they get it done. They take the game. And it's on the back of a brilliant start to side two. Since Dallas, Fnatic have been the better precinct uplink team statistically. And they show it right there. Seven to five. They don't tilt after that awkward opening inside one. And now they'll at least give themselves a chance to fight in hard point to win the series 3-1, to one, but have a game five search and destroy where anything can happen. And look how much different the faces are of a LG right now. Yep. They've gone to shots through this entire series, even during the S&D where they, were, they ended up losing. And they were just kind of laughing, smiling, didn't feel a whole lot of pressure. What did you see there? Is that them being pissed off, disappointed? Oh, well, it just it wasn't the same, that's for sure. That's them going, we just blew a 5-2 lead in S&D. We just lost an uplink to a team we destroyed on that game mode two days ago. 
And now we're going into map four at a deficit, having to try to fight back. This has been their last two series that they've had to deal with this now. Not sure what's going on with LG. Uh, need to see a little bit stuff, better stuff from them, especially in regards to bouncing back after rough map losses. In my opinion, they should have won that uplink. They were just not catching on to how Fnatic liked to play it. They had a lead in the uplink. They had a lead in the search and destroy as well. LG looking a little bit vulnerable right now. And what I also want to bring up is that's one of those few maps where LG get out Slade. They're so, they're, they almost have like an Optic situation where we used to see Optic where they would finally get out Slade. It happened in Advanced Warfare where the only team that could match up with them was FaZe. Obviously, it, it happened a little bit earlier this year with LG where it, it, it would have to change their whole play style because typically where they could command the pace of the game, command the power positions, they're not having to fight back for control of those. That happened throughout the map for LG. They just seemed lost. Well, and you mentioned, uh, you know, one of the keys to beating LG is trying to spread them out. You know, don't let them kind of hunt like a wolf pack. Yep. And there, you know, you kept mentioning that they were they were worried about the flank. They were spreading out to try and deal with it, but Fnatic was just kind of pushing them like a, maybe a North American team would do. So you would see Fnatic having kind of those 4v3 advantages, 3v2 advantages when they were trying to push towards Statue. Well, if you look back at some gameplay, and I mentioned Raided earlier this weekend, but again, I've got to commend him from the European scene on this map and game mode combination and uplink. Him with the NV4, he was lights out on this during his stage one performance, if you remember. He was disgusting at uplink for the weekend. It's because of how Wuskin also kind of played right there, which is you're just pre-aiming at all times. You are just holding down left trigger, waiting for people to run into your gun. He's got his lead blockers all around him. He's basically just that slow push on the map that they move with, forward with the drone. He's the guy, he's not picking it up, but he's making sure all the kills come in. And that's usually how, where we see Octane excel, but yep. he, he didn't really. I mean, Wuskin outplayed him there if you're just straight looking at statistics. And I mean, the downside is though, you know, Wuskin can't really play an identical role when we get to hard point, right? He's gonna be required to move more. He's not gonna be able to set up there. Are they gonna be able to count for? Because it hasn't been Wuskin the guy going off in hard point. It, it's been Scraps. I mean, it's the other part of that twin duo. Yep. He's been the one crushing. Didn't have the best game one. I, I think you need like a highlight reel performance from him if they're going to have a chance in this game four. Fnatic need this so badly, man. They need this so badly for the weekend. If they get this, they set themselves up in a fantastic position. What can they do, though? I wish we could get a shot of EG. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> They've got to be in the, pl uh, the pro lounge just stressing right now because they know how much more difficult their route gets and if Fnatic takes this series. Th think of this scenario. EG go up 2-1 in the match last night. LG win the hard point, they go to a game five. That's EG's chance, right, to snake that series. EG gets walked over Six -one. on Crusher s &D. Now Fnatic in the exact same spot can wind up really helping themselves this weekend if they do what EG couldn't last night, and that's close out the series. And that's what reminds me a little bit of uh, even thinking back to, what was it? Week three from stage one with the Luminosity and Epsilon group and E-United, like there'd be a team that would get uh, up up 2-0 over somebody and that E-United kept reverse sweeping. And those those reverse sweeps were the difference between kind of who got in and who didn't. The ability to not close out series for a team like Epsilon is what ended up costing them. Will that be the same story here for EG or Fnatic? Oof, I did not realize game four was gonna be scorch hard point. This, this one is uh, gonna be a tough test for Fnatic. Scraps is dropping 35 plus. And, and you think Fnatic are gonna win? No. <laughs> All right, so Maven has the bold prediction that Scrap's gonna drop 35 kills for the loss. Yeah, I, I think that the problem here, uh, on this map in particular, so many times, Luminosity, regardless of playing smart or not, like we saw him play day one against Mind Freak, Mind Freak outplayed them. They were rotated early. It just didn't matter. Luminosity was able to break through time and time again. Hard points where you can rotate quickly, hit hard. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I feel good about LG here. Octane drops the one shot, but there's no cleanup. Slack pushes right on through. Thankfully for Fnatic, they do still keep those back spawns, but off the break, it's LG. That's what they always do on this map, though. They keep uh, one player always behind that middle hut area, just, just laying down, playing his life, waiting until the team finally decides to push on through. Like right now, you just saw Octane hop out to try to help. Thankfully, Scraps was there with the ERAD. And I do believe Fnatic, yeah, they'll get the better of the trade right here to take back the hill. The big thing if you're Fnatic, and I, I don't know exactly how you try to limit something like this, but what stood out for me for Luminosity this weekend in Hardpoint is it feels like they've had multiple players on streaks in a lot of their big wins, like two, three players that are getting fully streaked out. You can't allow those big swings in momentum where everyone goes off for LG and you've just got so much utility to work with. Well, you gotta avoid that at all costs. Why man. do you feel that way? It's because they have four players with above a 1.1 respawn KD. We talked about how that's just unheard of in Infinite Warfare so far. Fnatic, they do rotate early. This is exactly what happened on throwback earlier in map one, but LG got a break on their first push. We'll see if they can do it again here. Well, they're flying in. Tommy 
pops up with the surprise. Good job staying alive in the corner. The last player was slacked. He will get dropped in Fnatic. Hold on. Brilliant stuff so far. They've clawed back in it off after a below average first hard point. This is where you can do your damage. Great stuff so far, Turbine. Classic just tries to slide in and get behind the hut. Unfortunately for LG fans, he's dead almost instantly. Thankfully, Saints, though, is there to fulfill his space. And just like that, LG should push through. They've got 20 seconds to take here. Nice break from Luminosity. Yeah, and that's what I mean. They're going to they're gonna have a couple opportunities on most of these hard points. And you just feel like you give them two, three tries, they're going to end up breaking in. But Fnatic gets right back through, and they'll control the final 10 or so seconds. You do have Classic, though, set up in the new one. There's only Tommy here, I think, to try and fight, and he's going to be eliminated. So Hangar set up nicely for LG to get back into it. You can see that number two on the minimax, Slack, just waiting all the way in the back, making sure he maintains these rock spawns for his team. Will Sunny B check the corner as he flies forward? The answer is no. Slack with one. He's expecting the second oh, that player. Nade. That's perfect. <laughs> the nade cleans it on up. He's done his job. Now it's up to his teammates to do the rest. Inside the hill, it's a two versus one. Tommy's just got to stay alive and wait for his squad to come off spawn. And the big thing there, Slack pops in the same spot. So they keep holding that back kind of corner spawn. We're just going to make it very easy. And look, look at this spawn. The, you see the number five. That's Sunny B on the minimap. Look where they're spawning. Just spawning all the way out of Turbine. Running back over. Spawning back over. And that number, who is it? It's Saints that keeps peeking out the door and making sure they maintain that spawn back there. A lot of times we see that happen, right? You get that sneaky corner spawn because you don't control it properly in Hangar. LG doing a good job. I actually love what we just saw from Classic on this entire hill. Would love to have this broken down by our analysts, too, because that's the little things that Classic brings to this team. He started the game one and three. He got in position right there, challenges gunfights that he expects to win, falls back and calls out for his teammates and knows that they'll have his back to clean up those kills that are pushing on through. Now he'll just wait for his team to come off spawn. I'm happy we've watched his perspective through this entire streak because I think he could teach a lot of players exactly how to maneuver around not only that hangar area, but the rotation here towards rocks. And also, remember what we said, talked about earlier, like you can't give up streaks. So a bunch of players here on LG and Classic very close. He's still 175 off. He's the last player alive. I try and play your life. I don't know how he's going to get out of the situation. Okay, so he did the opposite. He soared on in. There was a trophy team kill for Fnatic. Will that give LG the opening they need? Yeah, it definitely does. 100 points now earned for LG. They're up by 30. And they're going to look to end this first rotation of hills with an exclamation point. If they can just get the rest of the scrap time. You look at the slang right now, pretty much dead even between these teams. Yeah, I mean, you've done a much better job if you're Fnatic at keeping this close compared to what we saw in the game one throwback. Looking to get the final five seconds or so here. Back to mid-map. They're already going to be set up as it's been a rock spawn for Luminosity as they try to fight back in. Scraps is going to be the first man in. Picking up as much time as he's able to do. Almost able to gun slack, but loses it by a bullet. And just like that, fourth and down. Four dead. Thankfully for Fnatic, again, they do keep these spawns. But for right now, Saints, look at how annoying he's being. They're just trying to run back towards the hard point. And he's just sitting inside L. They've given it up again. Saints peeks back through, gets more information for his team. They've got a Scarab now chasing as well. There's the clean. Dude, this is this is where Saints get scary. Well, this is where Saints get scary, man. Think about it. It's one of the most, even if you're playing pubs, it's one of the most annoying things. It's like, it's borderline spawn killing, right? Because he's getting to such a four forward position. It's like, oh, you're frustrated. You died. You take five steps. You're dead again because a nice angle from Saints. I love it. And now look at the score difference. Going into drill, it was about a 15 second game. Now up to almost 80 in favor of LG. And they've already got bodies here. I'm wondering how they decide to push through. They have no payloads to use, but they do have a timing window where you, ha you see on your mini-map, Waskin still coming off the spawn. They've got to pick this player off this cover where only his head can be seen. It happens, the headshot from Classic, hitting the shots he needs. And this, I think this just is the end of the game right here as LG look to get a full 60 again now on drill. Yeah, you have to break your Fnatic, or unfortunately. Hey, you know, you talked about the slang being early. That, you said that about 90 seconds ago. It, it's changed quite a bit. Oh, yeah. LG started to heat up. You saw Classic go off. Saints started to go as well. Uh, you're contesting at least if you're Fnatic, and you actually do get a nice breakthrough without the use of any payloads. This has been incredible. If they can at least hold on here, though, that, that's going to be the question. Scraps somehow pushed out Catwalk and didn't die. They do get three dead. They will get the rest this time. LG, though, on Hangar. We know what they're capable of, what we saw them the first time around. They are set up for these spawns, and Classic's pushing out this drill lane. He's trying to make sure they can't even get near this hard point, near this back rocks area. But at the same time, that kill, because of the pressure fanning out across the map, you don't have Slack spawning at back rocks. Fnatic have a chance to break. They had a chance. Can uh. they still do it here? It's a 2v1. Classic and company, they're able to hold on. Him and Saints, man, that ERAD combination, just so deadly. 
on Hanger alone. Classic's been like 10 and 1 overall. In, 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 uh, he had a 5 streak, two 5 oh streaks. My God. Now Octane clears middle map with a 3 piece of his own. And look at how far he pushes up this lane. Yeah, if I, if I picked an MVP right now uh, from this series, at least for the side of Luminosity, I, th I think it'd be Classic. Classic has been fantastic in this series, but they're still fighting from behind is the big point here. F Fnatic enjoying a 2-1 lead, but they're trailing massively here in the hard point. And even now, LG push up so far that they actually give the back spawns to Fnatic, and they all just fall back and kill them off that spawn as well. Classic doing such a good job here. 2.0 KD at 18 and 9. 10 seconds left, and we're going to rotate out the drill. Uh, first player to push from Luminosity. You see in the bottom of the minimap, that's going to be Octane that's set up and waiting as now they begin to push out. Plus 14 now for LG and Slaying. And now a 100 second lead because of it. They're trying to take mid map control, and I, I will commend Fnatic on doing a solid job of getting bodies there when they need to. Typically, LG, they love to send, you know, Saints to that middle map area. You get the help of Slack there. Classic and Octane will push right through jail through drill and go for the break, but Fnatic know that and they keep bodies there. And, and like, just like I said coming into this game, where Wuskin enjoyed sort of like you described why it worked for him, be able to set up kind of stationary, sit behind his teammates, that doesn't work on something like Scorch. And look at the flip. I mean, we had what, 33 kills last game? Now he's sitting at 7 and 18. <laughs> like, that, I guess that lack of well, pressure and just sitting back and being able to gun, not going to work here. And this has been something that's happened to Wuskin. He doesn't just have bad games, he has abysmal games. And it's, it's almost like he only knows one type of play style where when that's not working, he just keeps trying to do the same thing and keeps having the same result. As right now, I mean, whew, he's got smoked too there by Classic. Classic 23 and 11. We're going to a game five again, a dominant hardcore performance from LG. Saints first man in, should be a couple ticks here. They're gonna try and fly in, but 250 should be hit momentarily. There's just one contest, there it is. 250 to 142. Uh, LG, I think, are just mad at themselves that it's even going to a game five. Simple as that. Their last right. two series go into game five. Both of them, probably in their minds, shouldn't have. Oh, that, like, look, they have, they're not even, they, 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 they actually look angry after dominating that hard point. Well, Octane looks like he needs a nap and a, a doctor, maybe. But uh, <laughs> no, they, uh, I, any team we've had, I guess, other than that stretch where Optic was like 23 0, has been vulnerable. Even, even Optic at that time, I know they had some crazy runs, but still would look vulnerable. I mean, there's no, I don't think we've had anything like a complexity maybe of old where they just look like they're never going to lose a series. Yeah. LG hasn't approached that yet, and you can see it as much as we've talked about them. Uh, yeah, you have them in the argument for best team in the world, them or Splice, really. You still see they can be vulnerable, whether it comes back to Search and Destroy Woes, uh, where a team sort of outthinks them like Fnatic did, yep. or, or maybe in the uplink where they're not making the right plays. All that matters, though, we're going to a game five. Everything on the line for Fnatic. Who's going to take it? It's one search and destroy to decide this series. We'll see you after this quick break.
ladies and gentlemen, it's game five between North America's best and EU's fourth best. Fnatic, LG, everything on the line for this championship Sunday as Fnatic are looking to take the second place spot in this group and they can put themselves in a fantastic place to do so by taking this best of five series off LG. I still don't know if they're gonna do it. I, it's like, part of me wants to see Fnatic take this series just because of the EU and a rivalry, the fact they beat them twice this year, like I love that stuff. But at the same time, I almost want LG to win because I want that EG Fnatic do or die matchup. I mean, it's still gonna matter regardless, yep. but the kind of winner, winner go home, I, I like that mentality yeah. headed into. Yeah, that's the crazy thing about this, right? Is Fnatic win or lose in this series, you can kind of still see how that last match matters no matter what. Yeah, but the win, I think EG would just be pressure to 3-0. I think they'd have to 3-0. Yeah. So, Call comes down to this. As we head into game five, if you miss the rest of the series, games one and four were blowouts in hardpoint. LG just the far superior team. No other way to put it. Games two and three, though, oh. were one possession, one round differences. Fnatic makes a 5-2 comeback. You also wind up having a one dunk difference in uplink, but Maven, I, I don't I know why you just made that sound effect. <laughs> I know you why why you just said that, and it's because you saw this map come up. Yeah. Crusher, why why are you scared for Fnatic here? LG's winning this game. And LG has been blessed by two Crusher game fives. Um, this is the easiest map for them to thrive at what they're good at, and that is. All right, here we go. Ready? Four, four man retakes. Octane, four on four Octane middle map watching the extension with an AR through B, and you're gonna have three people playing inside A. That's how this will be played. Yep, and uh, it's just, I think this is a hard map to get them out of their mold. I, I talked to EG about it last night, like what they thought they could have done, and it, was, it ended up being a long conversation. They weren't really sure. It, it's just not an easy map to kind of split the flock. It, I, I don't know what split the flock even Yeah, I, don't, I actually have no idea where it's going to move <laughs> on. It's now Sunny P in the back of the map with the bomb. They're just waiting. They're playing passively again. They keep trying to play these mind games with LG, force them to overextend, force them to maneuver when they really don't need to. That's what they have to do. Yeah. They have to get LG out of their comfort zone. It is a 3v2 advantage. It's trading back and forth. Tommy now, the vet, one of the greatest all time for European Call of Duty players, has got the weight of the world on his shoulders here in a 1v2, 35 seconds This actually on could the be clock. really good positioning for him. <gasps> there we go, 1v1. He knows his last player's here too. He spotted him as well. Both players full health. He saw his foot. Slack tries to run away. He has been spotted. Slack will just reset the map, though. And it, the reason why this works for Slack is Tommy still has to plant this bomb. Yep. It's, the question is, can he get a good timing on it? Oh, <gasps> I think he spotted him. Oh. He did spot him. Tommy got him. And he has an E-Rad, but it ends up working out for Slack. A little bit of spidey sense there as he wraps back towards mid. Wow, what a high-stress round to kick off game five. Yeah, it does not get much closer than that. Turns back around for the kill on Tommy. As we will see LG get the first round secured. Starts with the first blood from Octane in middle. That's where Octane will be the whole game. Just middle map with an a NB4. Okay, it's gonna be LG's turn on offense, and it will be four man hits every single time. This time it's gonna be towards B. It should be a quick and easy plan. It's a similar defense you're seeing from Fnatic. They're playing the LG style. You know, at number four, it's Tommy. He's watching the cross. They're gonna to start to head on over. The question is, do they have just the, the trading power to take a four-on-four -four retake like we see LG do time and time again. This is the same thing that happened in the S&D game too, where early on in the map, okay, that's a huge kill. LG cap, first off, that should never happen, but LG were just allowed to play the way that they wanted to with these plants, with the full takes of sights. Here goes the three before retake right now. Slack dead on the site. Saints now dead. The rest come swarming in. Nice job by Fnatic, and it all starts with the first blood from Scraps. Yeah, that was that was remarkable. I mean, maybe without that first blood, they still do it, but that, that opens the door, right? We know why defense can be favored here. It's because the ability to retake like that through that doorway. You know, you wait for the nades to go, you slide in, you're able to usually find a pretty easy entry kill as you're flooding with multiple players. But that, I mean, Scraps' first blood, it just makes it, it makes it the rest look easy, right? He just beamed him right there with that E-Rat. Yeah. That was absurd. You think classic. Trying to push towards that site. Maybe he lives if he used to have that back plate. I think Classic was like, but sorry, no. sorry, sorry, guys. I don't know what the hell just happened. Yeah, no <laughs> longer having camo doesn't absorb that extra shot to the back and makes all the difference there. Well, really nice job from Fnatic to tie this up at one to one. We went round 11. They've been round 11 so many times. Another first blood. This is huge. That's where they struggled so bad in the first game, right? They couldn't get any first bloods going until later in the game. Now, back to back, one coming from each of the twins. Octane is just going to wait. But if I'm Fnatic, I know that this is how LG like to play this. I, there's no way I push, push towards Rock. 
And this is the difference. I mean, right now, if it was four on four, I have no doubt in my mind LG is winning this round. But the fact you're down a man makes everything so much trickier. You know, you can't send two, three players to slide on through here. The trades just should go in the favor. Oh, of course, Sunny B just guns everybody. Go by bye Octane. Octane should be done. This is brilliant. Fanatic. They're doing what EG couldn't last night. And that's, well, really just putting putting numbers in their favor. Don't, don't allow those even fights that EG couldn't win. Yep. Let's see. Round one, Octane gets first blood. LG win it. Rounds two and three, Fnatic get first blood. Fnatic win it. Okay, let's see who who will get that edge here in round four. Take a note of scraps too, if we can, really quick. Look at his payload. Already 60% earned on a three streak too, so he's got that scarab to use. And he just pre-fires Saints. Mm -hmm. And it, it's for first blood, what, one was scraps, one was Wuska, now they both basically get it, as they both find kills, just, oh god, this is so, so good from Fnatic. LG now having to try and clutch a two versus four. Slack sees the tip of a head, but nothing going to come out of that. Actually, okay, take it back. That grenade bounced perfectly, but he's now in a one versus three. This would be for the ace. Oh, and Slack's been spotted. Where, the, where do I go? The end is near, right? They've got players all over this underpass area. Tries to challenge. Scraps with the kill. That's big. Because now Scraps should have the Trinity Rocket, and we know how important that is on a map like Crush. Part of the reason he gets that kill, he is uh, one of the only players that is going on his belly there. Yep. Everybody else goes vertical. You saw the hip fire from Slack start to rise. Slack doesn't play with the scuff. You rarely see him jumping. And uh, he, he surprises players. You, you talk to guys, and they're like, he's not where I expect him to be. I'm aiming at the sky. He's not there. How does Fnatic always do this? It's I like, love it. Look at Scraps, the MVP right now in game five. And... They haven't spot anything. If he goes for a fast plan here, oh my goodness, the mind games. LG know he has these streaks. They say, you know what? We're going to try to flood him at the B side before they can plant. Instead, they're already in a fully streaked out is Scraps. A kill or two away from Camo. If they win this round, I think this is GG. I think it is too. Wuskin goes up high again. First two kills, Scraps. Wuskin, the twins going so massive. They want it, man. They want to play for that $500,000. It's just a month away, and they can taste it right now in this game five. Look at them. They're combined for 11 and three. Oh, my goodness. Classic. There's no time. This will be a round win for Fnatic. That's all Sunny B needs to do is just run away from this site. Sunny B's five and one as well. Got to give him a shout out, too. Yeah. <laughs> I actually combined Sunny B and Scraps' stats. Yeah, there. you did. You did. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Brother, Sunny B could be a triplet for all we know. Look at him back there. <laughs> what? S similar look at the uh, Similar jawline. They look line. nothing alike. Yeah. Similar hair. <laughs> what? I think you're just saying Scraps and Wuskin, who are identical twins. I don't know. Okay. Uh, you're actually making negative sense, which is impressive. You're welcome. 4-1 lead for Fnatic. You see a sliver away from Camo is Scraps. He's had a, see? an incredible game. Get away with your life. Good job. The hand is now forced. If he gets a kill with the Scarab, he earns this active camo. So I'm wondering, do you just call this in, try to get an assist? Yeah, he does do exactly that. Here comes the streak, tags up multiple players. Sunny B pushes in off the back of that. That that assist is enough to earn the active camo. Scraps, though, dead immediately, will not have it for this round. Only one left now. Tommy in a one versus three, trying to tag up everybody. But unfortunately, no teammates left to finish those kills. A lot of time on the clock, but the bomb has now been planted. Tommy in a very tough spot. Yeah, he knows it too. Just trying to see if they push towards him. Not going to happen as of yet. He was just spotted, and here comes the quick cleanup. They should find him here moment. To oh, wow! The first is his, but uh, classic with the slide across. Can't snap onto him in time, but a uh, nice kill there on Octane at the back box. Yeah. Some uh, Chris. Tommy's, Tommy's had some ridiculous shots at the end before. He had that two-piece yesterday in SND on Retaliation. Yeah. Pushing from back market, spotted the guy at front tank near Cathedral, and just four-bulleted him from across the map, it felt like. Tommy, your team's up four to two. You've got full streaks. Now on offense, I want to see the boys from Fnatic grab this bomb, immediately rush right towards B, hover that Trinity rocket, and go ahead and get the plant because of it. This is the exact setup they would want for this. It looks to be developing. This is perfect. Starting to push down to B. They should get a quick plant here. Everybody stacked over at the A site. Luminosity still, they're scared of these streaks. They have to be. Oh, and Scraps, yeah. the ability to make a play. Scraps, well, Scraps. for the camo. Yeah, Scraps honestly should just be backed up. But I'm guessing they're waiting to see if he wants to use camo too. Wait. 
LG has a Trinity? Classic has a Trinity rocket. I actually had no idea. And I think he just got a hit marker, maybe on the one on the wall run, wasn't able to finish it. He wants to call on streaks of his own. Can he connect? Hasn't finished anything yet. This would be such a huge round win if somehow Luminosity pull this out. It looks like they're going to be able to do it. Everybody down. This, this game just got so different. They always find a way. Wow, I had no idea Classic had a Trinity. No clue. They always find a way. I, I, I don't get why Scraps was at that close box. I don't understand that. Why is he even there? Well, you still have Embarment. It, I mean, it's not the worst case. At least you didn't burn camo or something. <laughs> if you had used camo there, that would uh, really have flipped this match on its head. But that's a round, you know, you should have won if you're Fnatic. LG clutches up. You can't give more like those away. Oh, that is just... Maybe it's a favor return. Oh, God, and now look at Classic. If he wasn't having a great enough weekend already, Bombardment earned two, Centurion now there, and it's going to be a straight-up 4v4 gunfight. The Scraps use the camo. This is the one where you always give LG advantage. Are they able to do it? Multiple players tagged up, but Saints and Classic juggling back and forth. So far, it's even. It's three on three. Fnatic is backed up. I like this. Get out of there. I mean, I, maybe you could have won that fight. I know you went one for one, but I think the longer that goes on, it's just going to start to favor Luminosity. Classic drops the Centurion, too. So if Camo goes storming on through there, he'll obviously get stunned on up. Can we get to, uh, I want to go to Scraps' POV uh, when they start to push, see what he's going to call on. So he actually calls them a barman. He does have Camo to work with. So he, if he invests both into this round, they better win. Classic's going to use one of his own. Go ahead. They're getting tagged up by the Centurion, too, so they know that there's a player near the site. This bombardment will clear it on out. Now down to 20 seconds, and this is a great angle for Octane. To <gasps> you can't get gunned there, but who else? Classic 11 and 4, the MVP. Give me all three as Tommy gets obliterated coming over the top. Yeah, I, I said he was MVP of this series before game five. Yeah. Now he's just cementing that. You know. Wow. The greatest bromance in COD esports between JCap and Classic. JCap's will be sitting there with his bowl of ice cream, smiling ear to ear. I think he's in Hawaii right now, trying to learn how to surf. And then he's there with a pina colada and a bowl of ice cream. Probably. I can't imagine JCap trying to surf. No, I can't either. Probably he's probably taller than the surfboard. Looks like somebody drowning. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll have you and JCap discuss that one. It's, now it's Fnatic four to four, Classic the one man army. Three plants, 12 kills in this game five. A story of first bloods. Who's going to find Ooh. it this time? Waskin, get the hell out of there. That's exactly what he yeah, right. needed to do. And that's that's our, you know, Octane. Whatever region he's holding on the map is a, a very, very scary one. We know how accurate he can be, whether he's vertical, prone. Doesn't miss very many shots with the MV4. And you got to think about it, too. Scraps has the camo. Is Octane going to get it? He, he might. It, this, this is where he wears Classic still had it, right? It's one of those where if it goes to round 11, I think he has it. Scraps now dead. Tommy trying to flood through. He's got the help of Wuskin as well. Slack, though, always seems to be the difference maker. It's Saints all by himself. Fnatic do a better job in the 4v4 trades. Now, did anything get invested there? I don't think Scraps popped the camera. Nope. Or did I miss it? Nope. So you still have camera to close the game out here. Great stuff from Fnatic. Saints like, just penned in a corner there. I'm like 90% sure he didn't use it. We'll see, though, as the round starts on up. They push it to around 11. Maybe Octane is able to get it. Nope. They have everything. Wow. They, they have, have everything. everything to use. Does Classic have any other streak? Nope. Centurion. All right. This is it. This is a must-win round for me for Fnatic. Don't let Octane earn the camo at all. And Octane has been amazing in search. Really, Octane and Saints have led them in search. KD overall, they've been really, really strong. 6 and 17 right now. One player peeking across. He's able to back up on the wall. Two are coming in. FTL jump behind. The Camo, Camo gets body blocked. He's able to search behind, but Classic's already found two. You can't miss any shots here. He hasn't finished it yet. Octane's going to get the kill. Waskin's out left by himself. How did he not kill both? They were both one bullet. He just shot circles around one. The one was full health. <gasps> dropped them both to one, one shot. He needed just one more in each. Classic's on the way to his second Centurion. <laughs> 15 and 5. Wuskin has FTL. Yeah, I love the balls of the play call there from LG. Just to hit the wall run, FTL through. The camo goes behind. What a crazy, yeah. crazy set of events that was. Now Wuskin has to try and cl clutch. Otherwise, it's what, the fifth round 11 for Fnatic this weekend? 
They're just playing the crates. Musk can spot him. I mean, he, ha he had to go time. He's yeah. up time. Yeah, he had to go there. He had to challenge one of these. You don't have a choice. Jump off. All right, he's going to jump off. OK, I'll say, if you're going to try and make a play, you going to go with the first guy. 11. Up to this point this weekend, Fnatic are one and three in round 11s. Here we go again. And with what they had earlier from Scraps, how in the hell are we even in this scenario? Now think about it too. I think Octane's about to kill off of the camo. So if he finds a, a first blood or an opening kill, that could be the difference. He might be, he's, he's close. Very, very close. Well, here we go. Bomb being moved forward. LG with their typical scenario, slowly rotating over. Classic gets spotted by Tommy. He's so far out from the rest of his team right there. And that's, a, that's the second time he's been first blooded in, in a scenario he probably shouldn't have. And now you're going to have to try and clutch up Tommy at the edge. Octane, if he can peek and get a kill, if he can tee somebody up, that is likely going to be the difference. One comes to mind, there's the camo. He's going to pop it immediately. That is the difference. Finishes one kill. He is going to drop. It's going to be a 2v1. Tommy's used the reactive armor. One on one. Just a little bit left here to deal with. Slacked. Tommy, 20 seconds up, and Tommy gets him! When you need Tommy most, the man is there. A rough series from him up to that point, but in round 11, clutches up for his team, and Fnatic have done it. They've beaten Luminosity Gaming to kick off Sunday. Their chances of finishing top two in this group just got a hell of a lot better. What a game. Like that round, like you knew how it was going to go. Well, outside of Classic getting picked, it went how I thought it would. You know, yep. Octanus has to find a kill. He can be the game changer there. He gets two. But it comes down to the Wily veteran and Tommy clutches up with Reactive. And uh, God, it's the payloads, man. I mean, Saints had a rough game, never got near his Reactive armor, doesn't come into play. Tommy, just enough, man. Think Congrats. of this. What Think of win. this. Not only do they do what EG couldn't, right? By keeping getting that 2 1 uh, map lead and then winning the series in game five, but they do it on Crusher. In a dramatic round 11, that's a big, big match for Fnatic, not only in the scope of this weekend, but for what this team is truly capable of as a lineup. I'll tell you what, we got the Fnatic clutch captain himself, Tommy, on stage with Mr. X. Thanks, Maeve. And Tommy, the first thing I want to ask you, that round 11, what's going through your mind? You know, Octane pops the camo, he comes over, kills some teammates, you're the only one left. What's your kind of mindset there? What's the play? I've no idea. I just killed one. They say Saints is weak on bombs, so I just popped the kinetic because I think I got kinetic from killing Octane. So I just popped it, killed him, and then they said the last one's wall run. So I was sort of, I was going to swear there, but crapping myself, the guy's coming behind me. But luckily when I slid round, I just knew I had the round because I knew he'd be running that way. So got the win. And it's such a huge win for you guys, right? Through the rest of this group stage. You know, you got one more match against EG later, but you, know, you guys have always, you know, kind of historically played Luminosity pretty tough. What is it about this matchup that you guys like? I mean, they dominated us on hard points. Uh, we won yesterday, but they nearly did the, the comeback. So uh, it's just our S&D, I guess. Yesterday or the day before, we were losing all 6-5s. Today, we won two 6-5s. We did a 5-2 comeback second map. So it's one of the ones that just go in our favor. And we knew if we can sneak an uplink, uh, we can always get it to that last map. So that's how. And then uh, later tonight, you guys got a big match against Evil Geniuses. What do you guys have to do to take that come second in the group? Try and play like we did in the first day in the first game of the tournament. Um, although people will say EG came in a bit cold and we were hot, it's, we just got to do the same thing, keep the confidence we just had there, make sure we close out rounds we should be winning and uh, hopefully not make it that close. Yeah, you definitely don't want to see it that close. You know, going into that qualification match later in the day, we'll send it back to Puckett and the guys at the desk to break this down. Thank you so much, Matt. And boy, this much, this, uh, this must be an insane <laughs> moment for EG. Sorry, I just saw Parasite and the boys walking towards the stage. They know what just happened. Two round 11s, and at the end of this one, Fnatic comes out on top. I'm not even going to bring up your predictions anymore, guys, because the numbers, they're, they're not pretty so they're not far. Good, no. <laughs> but Joe, how shocked are you? Because coming in, you said this is an LG 3-0. Well, just based off the maps, I, I definitely thought so. Again, the biggest, the biggest thing is the hard points. I just felt we're in such Luminosity's favor. And again, their search and destroy has gotten better and better every single event. I didn't expect them to lose both of them. But again, if you're going to beat Luminosity, you have to steal a respawn, which Fnatic was able to do. I didn't expect that uplink to the other way, but they won both those searches, and then it was in crazy fashion. Around 11, a 5-2 comeback. It was just all Fnatic. Let's talk about this first hard point because it was all Luminosity early on, and we have some of the highlights here, Momo, as we walk through. 
How did Luminosity jump off to such a hot start, and why are they able to kind of dominate Fnatic in this game mode? They, they were classic Luminosity. Slay heavy, their hard point was on, on point, the rotations. I won't say the rotations were perfect, but sometimes Luminosity don't have to be. They can just brute force it. I think they end the map with a positive 26 uh, KD over the team, just out slaying. But the one thing that they did do uh, that I really liked was they saved their payloads so, so much, and they just used them on baseball field twice. They had camo, FTL, and reactive, and Luminosity, they took all the bike path, they took barn and said, oh, you think you've got baseball? We'll take that as well. And it kind of just got a bit out of hand. I didn't expect anything else from Luminosity coming into game one. And I, I, I kind of looked at this game and thought, yeah, this is probably going to go my prediction pretty spot on 3 0. And then it all changed. Here's a look at the box score scraps, who we highlighted as being the key player for the squad coming into the day with a 1.07 in respawn. He only drops a .89, so I think that's just a testament to what was going on. Classic stays hot, though, and Joe, this is a guy you were highlighting coming into day three. Yeah, he, he's been exceptional all weekend long, and in this entire match, he, he really was. We'll get to those later games, but he was so consistent throughout. Just some of the other guys just didn't perform as usual, but his ERAD, one of the best in the world right now, just puts so much pressure on the map. Yeah, Go ahead, Deep. the two duos I want to talk about and why I think the hard points are so lopsided in this matchup is it's sort of like Sunny B and Tommy versus, I guess, Slacked and, and Classic. The ERAD battle, well, it's quite obvious who's winning that one. Classic just completely outperforming Sunny B in uh, most of the respawns. Luckily for Fnatic, they're able to take the link, but the hard points, he just completely, I think it's like a 10 or 15 kill swing just with isolating those two players. And when your ERAD player is get able to put so much pressure and stay alive for that long, it, the score is going to get out of hand. Let's keep it going into Search and Destroy. This one had TP Furious as always when he sees misplays. You're up 5-2. How do you have Fnatic back in this game if you're Luminosity? So this Search and Destroy didn't bother me as much. I thought Fnatic just made good adaptations going into the later rounds. Early on, LG was just completely outplaying them in this A bomb site. It seemed like Fnatic was just trying to face smash their way in and against the best gun skill team in the game right now, which is LG. It's just not really going to pay off for you. But when you can focus up on that loading side and stack into that A, Scraps did such a good job. A clip like right here, for example, well, he gets gunned there. But uh, later on in the Search and Destroy, he starts to win those in intro guns fights with the ERAD in towards A. If you're able to do that, basically going to secure your team rounds. The big thing for me is Tommy starts off like two, two and seven, and then he just punches up some rounds. This 1v1 right here, that round, that round number nine, I believe it was, it was 5-3. Luminosity have a three on two. The bomb's planted. None of Fnatic is around them. I'm not quite sure why Luminosity just didn't stick to the fuse. I mean, it's one of those situations where, yeah, you just want to trade out the ki those kills, but I feel like they could close the game out right there. And Momo, can you kind of sum up what happened in that round 11? Because it seemed to be a sloppy skirmish in the showers, and at the end, Fnatic comes out on top. Yeah, it, it really was just kind of, like you said, really, really sloppy. And I, I, you know, what, what was the one play that kind of changed it for Fnatic? I wouldn't even put a, a particular moment on it. But the one thing that I will say is Fnatic, you know, Tommy said on the stage there, they've lost round 11 after round 11 this weekend. They win around 11. I think that gave them just that kind of little bit of hunger. Uh, and going into the uplink, maybe that kind of momentum switch to win, to go, come back from 5-2 to 6-5 against LG it is a huge momentum boost. And we heard Fnatic getting loud on this stage. They were getting fired up. And yeah. then we come into game number three, Fnatic, insane start, incredible start to precinct up like, and this happens. I tweeted after the moment that I think the series might be over right here, boys. They may have run out of gas. Scraps with the drone in hand, all forward down. And then he's coming in. Momo, break it down. Why doesn't he score right here? Well, basically, at this given time, I, I presume his feet are in there. But you can see Classic. You can tell he's in the portal at the same time. And if you guys at home don't know, if, if you've got someone on the defending side in that portal, you can't score a dunk. He goes for that second jump, which, again, with two players, Sonny B and Wuskins picking up kills, you know, he could have got. But that one player, he cut, clutched up. And ironically, the tables turned there. You know, that two-point lead that Fnatic should have went in favor of Luminosity. And it's a four-point swing. And... How, how Fnatic actually came out on top on that game, you know, I was really impressed. And I think the end score was 7-5. Yeah, 7-5. I, I actually think it, it could have been more. What was the difference maker for you, Joe? Uh, it's got to be Wooskin versus Octane. And oh, it, yeah. Who would have thought? It was, it was one-sided. I mean, I, I don't think we've seen Octane really, like, what? Like, he was around Meg, Meg 10 area with that NV4, where Wooskin, he was, like, positive 10. And, and that's just a battle that Octane doesn't lose very often. I know he's feeling a bit under the weather this weekend, but... 
when's the last time we said Octane got out dueled on pre-state uplink? It's been a very long time, and he's just so confident right now, but that was really diff the difference maker. Wishin was able to control the map, allow his guys, Sunny B and Scraps, to just push up. I feel like every time I see Precinct uplink, I see Octane, 1.35, five scores, use of overdrive perfect. This time around, getting outgunned, and Fnatic showing up strong in the second half. That gives him the lead. So now it's 2-1. Fnatic's on match point. We go to hard point, though, and we know this has kind of been their weakness all weekend long, especially against the slang power here of Luminosity. As we take a look at some of the clips of game number four on Scorch, what are some of the best moments from LG? Uh, pretty much straightforward, just as, just like the first hard point, to be honest. Classic with this ERAD just doing a lot of work again. He used the play, player I highlighted from day two, doing it again on day three. And it just seems like uh, when they get control of Hangar especially, they're able to push so far out, and they actually had Fnatic spawning all the way over towards second hard point towards Turbine. When you're spawning them out so far, it's like a 15-second walk just to try and contest and get back time. So I, I'm interested to see on the box score how lopsided Hangar was in Luminosity's favor. It's just... It was easy when you're able to lock down a singular hard point for that much time. Yeah, I think as well, Wuskin, you know, on the opening goes from 33 and 20 at one point. He starts and I think it was 7 and 16. You know, he goes from one of his best games I've seen him play on LAN uh, to a very, very kind of sloppy one as well. So we, I kind of went into this and it sounds a really negative attitude. I was like, yes, Fnatic have, you know, secured a game five because I almost just thought, you know, LG, they'll take this hard point, standard stuff. Uh, but yeah, LG very, very strong. And like Team said, classic turning up once again. Momo actually said it on the desk after that game three up. Like he said, all right, we're going to a Game five. He just knew we were going to see LG oh come out goodness. on top, and here's how they did it: 250 to yep. 142. And hanger. TP, you nailed it on the head there. 106 to zero. Zero points in the hangar. Your opponent's 106 points right there. Unbelievable stuff, and I feel like other teams need to take note of what LG does in hardpoint, especially when you can get that wave of pressure so far out, you're able to take pro probably two, three, maybe even four gunfights in a row before they even get to the hill. If you're able to put that pressure out, it's just easy time at that point, so. Let's talk about this game five. It looks like Fnatic is just gonna run away with the game five. They start off so hot. TP, you asked for round seven and round eight, though. Let's take a look at round seven and talk to me why you got worried for the UK team. Uh, worried? Uh, uh. It's just so many times these guys are going to round 11s and they do it to themselves, just really terrible decisions. They get this bomb down and why is Scraps, the, the easy play here, you see those score streaks in the bottom right, Eddie has the camo. Why is he putting himself in a vulnerable position here? He should be in that back building, basically switching places with Tommy and then he decides to pull out this score streak after his teammate gets taken out. He does pick up one player on the bomb site, but the overall strategy with score streaks is to play your life you're the flank watcher. You're playing in the safest position possible to buy time for your teammates. They botched the round. They've done it so many times throughout this group. It's it's stupid. It's not smart. They need to fix it. I, I just feel like as soon as he sees that, that Trinity Rocket come down and blow up his teammate, you know you have a lead. Just give him the round. Let Luminosity win it. You know you have a four on three. You know they're probably going to clutch up. Unless you invest your camo and your other score streak, which just isn't worth it. And again, his positioning, why is he at that box? There's just no reason. If he gets taken out, I mean, even if Classic doesn't have a streak, he, he's vulnerable. And as Teep said, it's just not smart. You have to play your life. And I think it's kind of key that we are looking at these issues for Fnatic. Here's another example just one round later after using the score streaks from Scraps in the previous one. He comes into round number eight and break this one down. Where's the frustration, Teep? So, again, we're going to get over to when they go to plant this bomb on the side of LG and watch the timing of when Scraps decides to call down the bombardment. So it's going to be a couple seconds before this, this leads up to it. Should we but do it now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you don't want to risk for them to get away from that bomb site. It should be happening when you think they're planning or right when that bomb goes down. How many seconds is that? Five seconds, maybe even six seconds. Of course they're going to be gone. They know the, the Trinity rocket came in in the previous round. You know the bombardment is coming. Why call it that late into the round? Now there's 30 seconds left. They're forced to make a play that's out of their favor. They burn payload abilities so often in Search and Destroy. They burn score streakers abilities here. And then it opens a door for Classic to call his down and pick up a bunch of easy kills. Two rounds in a row where a Fnatic could have easily ended that game and they put themselves in another round 11 position. They do win it this time. But round 11s, uh, Joe, you and I can yeah. speak from that perspective. Round 11s a lot of the time are sort of coin flip scenarios. Hopefully your strat works out. 
Fnatic putting themselves in such tough positions that are easily avoidable. And I, I just feel like bombardments really should be used when you have the bomb planted. I, I feel like they're not. A, it's not a good score streak to use when you're retaking a bomb site. I mean, players can get away from it easily. It should be used on a bomb when that bomb is planted. Uh, but as you can see, classic plus 32 on the series. I will note one thing. He had a great series. MVP of it. Round 11, he got first blooded. Tommy peeks out. And I, I hate to put the blame on him, but he cannot get first blooded in that round. That makes it a 4v3 situation, and we've seen it time and time again how hard it is to retake that bomb site. And again, the, the big difference in that search and destroy has to be how many times Fnatic did get first blood, and Luminosity is just not used to being in that position. Classic's aggression, though, is also kind of that key factor that gives him the advantage in a lot of the rounds. So Classic, he gets first blooded at the end, but it all came down to that final 1v1. Props to Tommy, you sealed the deal, yeah. you win it versus Slack, and now Fnatic has locked up that second spot, at least for now. Here's a look at the group red overall. Fnatic, they got to look back at those two round 11s because they may be going up against evil geniuses for the final spot in the playoffs here from group red. Luminosity, even though they lost that series because it went to a game five, we'll have enough maps to officially lock in our first spot in our stage two playoffs. They will be competing for the $500,000. Yeah, but the big thing here will come down to just EG. EG, if they want a chance to take second, they have to win this game, this next game versus Mind Freak. And then it comes down to EG versus Fnatic. And I believe Fnatic 3 won them their first series. So yep. if EG is able to beat Mind Freak and, and go to 2-3, they can tie it up at 3-3, and then it'll come down to that head-to-head -head where they will have to win either 3-1 or 3-0. So we'll just have to see how, how it'll all play out. And of course, we are telling the story from our perspective, what we expect to happen. Mind Freak, they still have a chance. They have to play perfect today, and they got to go through Luminosity. So it's not going to be easy, but don't count anybody out quite yet. Don't go anywhere. The Call of Duty World League presented by PlayStation 4 continues when we return. And up next, we are going to see Evil Geniuses versus Mind Freak. But before we go to break, we got to remind you, just a few weeks away, we're headed to Orlando, Florida, the Amway Center for the Call of Duty World League 2017 Championship. $1.4 million on the line, and you can watch it in person. All you got to do is go over to MLG.tv slash CWLChamps. Pick up your tickets today to see Fnatic, maybe, Luminosity, definitely. Actually, Fnatic's going. All of our teams here <laughs> at Stage 2 are coming, and you're coming with us on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. We got EG facing off against Mind Freak when we return.